Let's talk about the properties of DFT. Suppose y n is a sequence of length n, and the endpoint DFT is as we have defined earlier. Y k is computed this way, and from the sequence y n we can compute the endpoint DFT, and from the DFT we can also compute y n back. Well, correspondingly we can have. We can apply periodic extension on y n. We get y delta n. Then the DFS coefficient of y delta n is y delta k. For the discussions of property of DFT, we often find it more convenient to work with the periodic extension and its DFS coefficient. We will see why in a minute. Now let's say、um, the first property is delay property. We have y tilde n. The DFS coefficient is y tilde k. Now suppose we have another periodic sequence, x tilde. X tilde is a delayed version of y tilde. It's y tilde delayed by n zero. Then its DFS coefficient is given in this form: x tilde k is equal to w n zero. N zero is the amount of delay, and k y tilde k. So, how can we read this equation? Let's say y n is this sequence here. Then y tilde n, a periodic extension of y n, would be one period of y, and then another period, and、uh, continue on like this, and on the other side too. Continue on the other side too. So this is y tilde n. And now we're going to shift to y tilde n. Let me draw an example. N zero is equal to one. Then y tilde n minus one will be the four black samples. The black samples will come here. One, two, three, four. Okay, the four black sample is now moving to one to n, and then the last red sample will move to the place of zero. So the red samples, and the green samples will come here. Here are the green samples, and this will be x tilde n. If we consider an x tilde n like this, the result told us that. The DFS coefficient will simply be y tilde k with this scale with this w zero and zero k together. The product of these two. So how can we see this result in terms of DFT? If we want to see the result in terms of DFT, first we ask the question: What kind of sequence would have a periodic extension? X tilde n. What is the corresponding sequence x n that will give us if after we apply periodic extension, we will get such an x tilde n. X n sequence should be should be the samples of x tilde n from zero to N minus one. So these are the samples of X n. So it will consist of a one red sample plus the rest are the black samples shifted. If we compare this with the original Y n, it's like moving the last sample to the front and then shift it to the place so that the samples occupy the time. From zero to n minus one, such a sequence is said to be a circular shift, circular shift of a y n. 
to put the relation, circular shift relation, in a mathematical expression, let's first define a modulo operation. Suppose m is an integer, and the m can be written as a multiple of n, a positive integer l. L is a number between 0 and the n minus 1. Then m modulo n is simply the number l. And this is called modulo operation. So returning to the connection of a circular shift, we can write it down as xn is equal to ym minus n0 mod n. For example, if we take the number minus 1 mod 4, the number 4, the number minus 1 can be written as 4 minus 4 plus 3. So, minus 1 mod 4 will be equal to 3. So this is equal to 3. So for example, x0 will be y minus 1 mod n, which is equal to m minus 1. And that's why the x0, x0 will correspond to the large sample here will correspond to the last samples of ym minus 1. So if we want to write down the delay property in terms of dft, it would be y m minus n0 mod n. This is xn. Then the dft xk is W and zero K and Y K. That's the relation in terms of DFT. So you can see why we didn't talk about the property in terms of DFT first. We instead we talked about the property in terms of DFS coefficient because it's more straightforward to state the property in terms of DFS coefficient. Now the proof. The proof is quite straightforward. We plug in the expression between x tilde n and x tilde k. And uh, now we plug in y x tilde n is equal to y tilde n minus n0. And what to do next? Maybe a change of variable will help us. So let's do m equal to n minus n0. Now m minus n0 is equal to m. So let me put m here. And in the place of n, it will become m plus n0. Now the index. n goes from 0 to m minus 1. So m will go from minus n0 to n minus 1, minus n0. Let me pull out the term that does not depend on m. So w, k, n0 is pulled out, and the rest I just simply copy. This look a little bit like the expression of dft, right? Very much like the expression of dft. The only difference is that the index is not right. Normally when we do DFT, the index goes from 0 to n minus 1, right? But in this case, the index goes from minus n0 to n minus 1 minus n0. So what is this summation going to be? Let's make one observation. Dip y tilde m, this is a sequence that is periodic, and the period is n, right? How about this W sequence? This is a sequence of M as well. Is this, is this a periodic sequence? Remember what W is. 
W is E minus J two pi over N, right? So W K M will be K M, and the K M. So this N is a periodic sequence, and the period is N. So both of them are periodic sequence, and the period is N. So together, the product is also the periodic sequence of M. And the period is n. Suppose I have a periodic sequence g tilde n, and this is one period, and the next period is here. The next period, and let me draw one more period. Suppose we sum up over one period. It's this one. Suppose I sum over this period. This is also one period, right? If I sum up this period, would it be the same as summing over this period? Would it be the same? They have the same thing, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter which period that we choose. We get the same summation. Now coming back to this summation here, y tilde m and w k m, both of them are periodic sequence. The product is a periodic sequence of period n, so it doesn't really matter which period we sum up with. It can be this period, m from zero to m minus one, and we get the same thing. And if this is perioded, we can easily recognize it. This is simply the DFT, the DFT computation. This is the DFT or the DFS coefficient, y tilde k. So we get the result. This is equal to k n zero, y tilde k. In a very similar manner, we have frequency shift or modulation property. When we shift y by k zero in the frequency domain, we shift y tilde by k zero. Correspondingly, in the time domain, y tilde n there's an extra term, an extra exponential term. W minus k zero n, and the proof is very similar to delay property that we have just talked about. So we will leave the proof as an exercise. We also have linearity. If x n tilde and x k tilde is a pair, and y n tilde and y tilde k. They are a pair. Then the time domain sequence that is a linear combination x n tilde and y tilde n would lead to discrete series series coefficient. That is a linear combination of x tilde k and y tilde k. Zero padding. Suppose y n is a sequence that has length l, and、uh, we know that for a length l sequence y n. If we do L point DFT, L point DFT, and we get a sequence y k. Let me put the L here to indicate that is the L point, and、uh, then k goes from zero one to L minus one. We can get back the sequence y n from the L point DFT. That's the Result that we have earlier. Now instead of L point DFT, we do M point, and N is a number that's bigger than L. L is smaller than N. Of course, we can also look at Y N as a sequence that has a length N, but then the last N minus L samples are equal to zero. When Y N is a sequence of length L. But when we do DFT, we are treating it as a sequence of length 
in a, lo- a longer sequence, it is like we are padding some zeros at the end of the sequence and then apply DFT on the length in sequence. With L point DFT, we divide the zero to two pi range into L parts. We divide and we take samples at multiple of two pi over L. Now, if we do endpoint DFT, still the same discrete time Fourier transform. We are taking samples of the t- same discrete time Fourier transform. If n is larger than L, then the samples will be more densely separated because n is larger than L, so the spacing will be smaller, right? The spacing will be smaller. So. Now we are taking n samples. Then the case when the size of DFT is equal to L. So if we plot the DFT, let's convert it to the DFT plot. For the case when we take L point DFT, then these are the samples that we have. So these are. The samples that we have in the L point DFT. Now, instead of a L point DFT, let's do M point DFT all the way to M minus one. Then, what are the samples that we have? We will get samples like this: one, two, three, four, five. And then the wrong one, and then more. So these will be the samples that we have. This would be the endpoint DFT. Now let me ask you this question: The reason they will want to compute DFT is because we want to do it in a computer, and we may want to look at the plot of DFT if we want to see. The discrete time Fourier transform. So this is what we want to observe, but we cannot really get this. So we compute the DFT, right? This is what we want to see the co curve, but we cannot see it. So we compute the endpoint DFT. If it were you in front of the computer and you want to inspect the discrete time Fourier transform of Y, which plot do you think? Is a better approximation of y e j omega, which means that you can better observe y e j omega from which one? Which one do you think you can observe y e j omega better from y l or from y n? Although in both case y l we can get back the original sequence y n, from y n we can also get back the original sequence y n, but If we want to inspect the Fourier transform of Y, we would like to have more detail or less detail, like Y L. More detail in Y N or less detail. Well, usually we want more details, right? We want more details. So that's why when we compute DFT on a computer, we usually choose a number. The DFT point n to be larger than the length of the sequence l, and this is called zero padding.